the Shabbat after Tisha B'Av and from uh, the Haftarah uh, is taken from Isaiah 40 chapter 1 through 26 and this is called the Shabbat Nachamu um, and I'm sure you all have heard that um, that from Isaiah the comfort oh comfort my people says your God Nachamu Nachamu Ami Yomer Elohechem the Torah Parsha for this week is called Ve'et Hanan and it's taken from Deuteronomy 3rd chapter 23rd verse through the um, 7th chapter and the 11th verse and in my uh, Torah it's divided up into four parts the first part called the second review it's a summary to observe the laws. It's taken from Deuteronomy 4th chapter 1st through the 43rd verses. The second part is called the second discourse, the Decalogue. And it's taken from Deuteronomy 4th chapter 44th verse to the 5th chapter 30th verse. The third part is the Shema from Deuteronomy 6th chapter 1st through the 25th verse. And the fourth part is idolatry from Deuteronomy 7th chapter 1st through the 11th verse. In Deuteronomy um, 3rd chapter 23rd verse begins, Be'et Hanan el Adonai Be'et Hahu Lamor Adoni Adonai Ata Achilta Leharot Et Avdecha Et Gadalacha the et yadcha ha chazacha asher mi el be shemaim ve baaretz asher ya ase ki ma asech ve ki va vo aretacha. I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, you who let your servant see the first works of your greatness and your mighty hand, you whose powerful deeds no God in heaven on earth can equal. Let me, I pray, cross over and see the good land on the other side of the Jordan, that good hill country and the Lebanon. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, or like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood, they are like, they are like asleep. In the morning, they are like grass, which grows up. In the morning, it is, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For you have consumed, for we have been consumed by your anger. And by your wrath, we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years with a sigh. The days of our years are, are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years. Yet their boast is only labor, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, for as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
return, O Lord, how long? And, and have compassion on your servants. O safe, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children, and let the beauty of the uh, beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of your hands for us. Yes, establish the work of your hand. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. We give thanks, Lord, for your great mercy towards us, for remembering us at all times, for granting us reprieve, and for healing us when it is when it is to, to your liking. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness, for remembering us and for remembering your promise. We give thanks to you, Lord, also for this day, for giving us a time to rest, by bringing us out of slavery, as you have brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, and gave them a day to worship, because they are free, and have given them a promise and confirm an oath that you made to their fathers to bring them into a good land and Christ Jesus has delivered us out of the house of bondage as well and given us and made us free as well and will bring us into an eternal relationship with him that we may all be free and celebrate the God who delivers and the God who keeps his promise, the God who makes oaths and confirms them. And we celebrate this day with our brothers, the Jews. We celebrate a freedom that could be gained by no other means than God himself. And we await that day when we are joined with him. We celebrate a freedom from sin, from the penalty of sin, we celebrate a time when we are free and we give thanks to the Lord God of heaven who has delivered us and to the Son. And we welcome him, him into our presence that because he has welcomed us into his and we rejoice in that great freedom. Great is thy name, Lord, and great is thy faithfulness in all the earth. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Barukata Adonai Elohidu Melo Halam Motsi Lekamin Sa'art. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us bread from the earth.
Blessed art thou, Lord. Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Melo Halam. Bere Pri Hagapen. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Mm. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. This is Waldorf salad. As I said before, we have four par portions to the, or four divisions to the Parsha. And the first one starts, it's called the summary. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, it's called the summary um, to observe the laws. And it's taken from Deuteronomy 3rd chapter 23rd to the 29th verse. And we'll have you read that one, John. Okay. And then I'll read the next one, which is Deuteronomy 4th chapter, 1 through the 43rd verse. And then we'll take a break. And then we'll you can read the uh, Decalogue, Deuteronomy 4th chapter, 44th uh, chapter, through the 5th chapter, 30th verse. And I will do the Shema and, you know, I think I, we have five portions here. Let me, yes, we have five portions. I, I, I made a mistake. So I'll do the Shema and um, the idolatry. So again, we'll have to start at Deuteronomy 3rd chapter 23rd through the 29th verses. Okay. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, have you you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand? For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. I pray, let me cross over to the cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, Enough of that. Speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah, Pisgah, and lift your eyes towards the west, the north, the south, and the east. Behold it with your eyes, for you shall not cross over to Jordan. But command, but command Joshua to and encourage him, and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you, which you will see. 
So we stayed in the valley opposite Beth Peor. All right. Right? Yeah. Now, uh, a couple of things about this verse. This was, um, as some have said, this was Moses' uh, prayer. 500, his 515th prayer to go into the land. And uh, God said no each time. Some speculate or wonder what would have happened or suggest that God may have relented had he asked, had he prayed one more time to see it, but that's pure speculation. But he did ask to go into that land. A couple of things that struck me, um, a, a, a word that says, uh, uh, verse 23, then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, meaning, uh, at that time, meaning after uh, the two victories from the uh, uh, that uh, Israel had uh, accomplished through Og and Sihon, the, the God, the um, I believe that was Og was one, and Sihon was the other. So after that victory, God uh, Moses uh, uh, prayed one more time to be allowed to go in the land, but what, he was refused. Also, he said something. Uh, to the effect of he simply wanted to see that pleasant mountain, which was uh, some uh, indicated reference to seeing Jerusalem and Lebanon, which was a reference to seeing the temple. Uh, Lebanon, sometimes the script Bible talks of the cedars of Lebanon, uh, Lebanon word meaning quiet or light. So basically Moses didn't want didn't necessarily go in and live in the land, or go in and enjoy the great fruits of the land, but simply wanted to go in and see the land itself. Yes, he eventually went in uh, sometime later, but uh, he wanted to go in with his people uh, to, uh, as, to, to simply, in his word, simply to see that land. But I said, but was refused. Um, those are the only uh, comments that I have. Well, one other comment, and I, I, I've not been able to trace it down yet, but we f refer to uh, Israel going into the Promised Land, and some have said, no, that's not quite accurate, not necessarily a Promised Land, it was the Covenant Land. Um, but I need to find out if there's any place prior to here where the word Promised Land is used. Um, but here, uh, most, we know it as a promised land, but it was a covenant land, a, a land that was granted by an oath to Abraham. Uh, it was a promise to give him that land, but it was covenant land, not necessarily uh, the promised land itself. Let's see. Uh, let's see. That's all I have so far, I believe. Well, I'm going to add to what you just said. You were, uh, um, I looked up the um, when Moses in verse 25, he said, Let me, I pray, cross over and see the good land on the other side of Jordan. And I looked up the Hebrew in it, and it's translated correctly here, Haaretz HaTovah, the good land. Um, and I didn't see uh, any other explanation for it in my particular Torah. They, um, you know, talked about whether the good land was, um, was there any reason why he called it the good land? And I, I didn't see anything other than that, but he called it the good land. Well, that, that's a reoccurring word throughout uh, the good land. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go on to the um, next part, which is from Deuteronomy 4th chapter, 1st through the 43rd verse. And I think, um, I said we were going to take a break after this, but I think we'll go on to the Decalogue and take a break after the Decalogue. And, and you'll read that, Deuteronomy 4th chapter, 44th verse, the 5th chapter, 30th verse. But we'll um, go on to the summary to observe 
uh, the law, I want to make sure I get my notes here, uh, the summary to observe the law. And it starts out, And now, O Israel, give heed to the laws and rules which I am instructing you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You should not add anything to what I command you or take anything away from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I enjoin upon you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did in the matter of Baal Peor, that the Lord your God wiped out from among you every person who followed Baal Peor, while you who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. See, I have imparted to you laws and rules as the Lord my God has commanded me, for you to abide by in the land which you are about to invade and occupy. Observe them faithfully, for that will be proof of your wisdom and discernment to other peoples who are hearing of all these laws will say, Surely that great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what a great nation is there that has God so close at hand as is the Lord our God whenever we call upon him? Of what great nations has laws and rules as perfect as all this teaching that I set before you this day. But take utmost care and watch yourselves scrupulously so that you do not forget the things that you saw with your own eyes and so that they do not fade from your mind as long as you live and make them known to your children and to your children's children. The day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me that I may let them hear my words, in order that they may learn to revere me as long as they live on earth and may so teach their children. You came forward and stood at the foot of the mountain. The mountain was ablaze with flames to the very skies, dark with dense clouds. The Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but perceived no shape, nothing but a voice. He declared to you the covenant which he commanded you to observe the Ten Commandments, and he inscribed them on two tablets of stone. At the same time, the Lord commanded me to impart to you laws and rules for you to observe in the land which you are about to cross into and occupy. For your own sake, therefore, be most careful, since you saw no shape when the Lord your God spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire, not to act wickedly and make for yourselves a sculptured image in any likeness whatever the form of a man or a woman, the form of any beast on earth, the form of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the form of anything that creeps on the ground, the form of any fish that is in the waters below the earth. And when you look up to the sky and behold the sun and the moon and the stars, the whole heavenly host, you must not be lured into bowing down to them or serving them. These the Lord your God allotted to other peoples everywhere under heaven. But you, the Lord, took and brought out of Egypt that iron blast furnace to be his very own people, and is, as is now the case. Now the Lord was, very, was angry with me on your account and swore that I should not cross the Jordan and enter the good land that the Lord your God is giving you as a heritage. For I must die in this land. I shall not cross the Jordan, but you will cross and take possession of that good land. Take care then not to forget the covenant that the Lord your God concluded with you and not to make for yourselves a sculptured image in any likeness against which the Lord your God has enjoined you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire and impassioned God. Should you, when you have begotten children and children's children are long established in the land, act wickedly and make for yourselves a sculptured image and any likeness causing the Lord your God displeasure and vexation. I call heaven and earth this day to witness against you that you shall soon perish from the land which you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. You shall not long endure in it, but shall be utterly wiped out. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a scant few of you shall be left among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will serve man-made gods of wood and stone that cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if you search there, but if you search there for the Lord your God, you will find him. If only you seek him with your heart and soul, 
when you are in distress because of all these things have befallen you, and in the end return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a compassionate God. He will not fail you, nor will he let you perish. He will not forget the covenant which he made on oath with your fathers. You have but to inquire about bygone ages that came before you. Ever since God created man on earth, from one end of heaven to the other, has anything as grand as this ever happened? Or has it like or 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 has its like ever been known? Has any people heard the voice of God speaking out of a, uh, a fire as you have and survived? Or has any God ventured to go and take for himself one nation from the midst of another by prodigious acts, by signs and portents, by war, by a mighty and outstretched arm, and awesome power as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt, for your very eyes? It has been clearly demonstrated to you that the Lord alone is God. There is none beside him. From the heavens he let you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth he let you see his great fire, and from amidst the fire you heard his words. And because he loved your fathers, he chose their offsprings after them. He himself and his great might led you out of Egypt to drive you from your path, nations greater and more populous than you, to take you into their land and give it to you as a heritage as is still the case. Know therefore this day, and keep in mind that the Lord alone is God in heaven. Above and on earth below there is no other. Observe his laws and commandments, which I enjoin upon you this day, that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may long remain in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Then Moses set aside three cities on the east side of the Jordan, to which a manslayer could escape, one who unwittingly slew a fellow without being hostile to him in the past. He could flee to one of these cities and live. Bezer in the wilderness and the tableland, belonging to the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilead, belonging to the Gadites, and Golan and Bashan, belonging to the Manasites. All right, let's go back to the first and I made, I just noted quite a few verses that st struck me as I was reading. Uh, Moses, again, I, uh, I said this so many times that I think that Deuteronomy or, or Dabarim is a book that you could preach the gospel from because Moses is giving the whole um, uh, story of what happened to Israel and why God brought them out from another nation as a people to to be his own people and um, the verse one I wrote give heed to the law at Moses is, um, um, he says to give heed to the laws and rules which I am instructing you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord your your the that the Lord the God of your fathers is giving you and then um, Again, he goes on, he said, now you saw all of this with your own eyes. And that's verse three, what he did uh, in the matter of Baal Peor. And um, um, it was a, a Baal Peor is, was, a, again, a Moabite deity. And um, um, I mean, it was, again, with all of these um, deities and they were always worshiping and um and having um, just this lewdness was involved in all of that. Then in verse 15, Moses again enjoins them to be careful um, uh, that you, um, he said, he, rem he reminded them when you, when you heard the voice of the Lord, you didn't see any shape. You didn't see anything. So he enjoined them to be careful that they not make, he's again reminding them what's in the Ten Commandments, that you don't make a shape or any sculpture or any image of what you think God is like, like the heathens do. And um, so I thought that was very, I mean, that was very straightforward. He said, because, and, and I, I can, I, my, my opinion as to why um, God um, doesn't want uh, to be worshipped the heathen do, because he's, placed in a box so to speak because the heathens make the statue and they worship a statue 
and the statue is given the likeness and given um, uh, deity when the statue was made by man's hand. So it can't really do anything. But when God, when you just hear his voice, you you know that he is so much bigger than a, a, a statue that you could carve out. And then his uh, very essence, you can begin to understand his very essence when you don't put him in a box. Um, and then in verse 25, um, again, I mean, uh, Moses says to them, and again, it's prophetic. He says, when you're established in the land and you act wickedly and make for yourself sculptured image and any likeness causing the Lord your God displeasure and vexation, he says, I will call heaven and earth to witness. You shall soon perish from the land. Again, it's a prophetic thing. He's saying, yes, you're going to do that. You're going to, you're going to, uh, um, um, be sent out of the land for uh, disobeying uh, God God's laws. And then another prophetic thing, which I find greatly um, comforting, Nachamu is the word in Hebrew, is the, from the Haftor, Nachamu, Nachamu is comforting, is that Moses is saying to them, which is very messianic, which, which, which lets us know that he's talking about redemption coming. And this is where, um, um, Jesus or Yeshua is being talked about because he's saying uh, in verse 29 he says but when you're over there in the land you've been scattered but when you search for the Lord your God you will find him if you will only seek him with all your heart and soul and when you're in distress because of all these things have befallen you and in the end and you return to the Lord your God and obey him for the Lord your God is a compassionate God he will not fail you, nor will he uh, let you perish. And again, this is a prophetic thing. Moses is really uh, 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 talking about the Messiah coming in order to bring the people back to God. And that's the purpose of, of Jesus, uh, Yeshua, is that his death and suffering was a way um, for us to be reconciled back to God, a pathway for us to be working out. And here Moses is talking about this in, in, in Deuteronomy. And then um, in verse, okay, I put verse, I already read verse 30. Um, and in verse 35, Moses again said, it has clearly been demonstrated to you that the Lord alone is God. There is none beside him. And I, I just feel that that is a, uh, messianic prophecy that Moses is telling them when you sin because they they sin basically he's saying you're gonna sin and in order there there's no uh, redemption from sin without blood and if there's no temple if there's so that they can do their sacrifices then that redemption from sin comes through our Messiah Jesus or Yeshua. And here Moses is telling them the story. And that's what I got out of this. John? Okay. Um, the uh, Just wanted to look back a little. I probably should have done it a little bit earlier. Um, maybe not in this chapter here. But Moses is looking back over the past 40 years. And um, he's uh, also uh, it was telling them why his parents did not enter the land is because they they lost faith in God and uh, they really they also lost their moral compass they were they were demoralized by what they saw in the land so the um, uh, to, to uh, if if there's a I guess there's a saying that uh, if you think you're beaten you are so by looking at the giants in the land, they they uh, lost uh, their morale. Let me put it that way, and didn't did not go in. So forty years later, they're at they're at the door again, and they they're in the process of going in. And God sets forth well two things. He sets forth his, his laws and commandments. We'll say commandments, uh, and. Uh, but he also tells them not to practice the same thing 
the people who are in the land are practicing. They're practicing idolatry. And God said, don't do that. What he wants them to do, he gives them commands to follow. And one commentator put it this way, and I think he has a point, that these commands represent God's love for them. And you can't really separate a command from love. Love is an action verb. It's not an emotion. We, we tend, to make, tend to make it an emotion, but it is not. Love is an action verb. And he speaks of all the actions that will take place. We'll talk about them more. Um, the actions of the consequences that will befall them uh, if they obey the command, certain things will happen. If they don't obey the command, then certain other things will happen. Uh, so it's not, they all possess the land. It's not unconditional. Only, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the inheritance is unconditional. The occupation of the land is uh, conditional, conditional upon them uh, respecting the land, respecting God, respecting what he has said. So the one way to destroy a, com a, a country or a society and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more, is to show disrespect for it. And the comedians do a very good job of, of destroying a, a, a culture or a society by making fun of it. Uh, by making fun of it shows disrespect. And um, that's one way of, of destroying it and minimizing it. Uh, folks don't fully appreciate uh, the command that God issued such as, uh, you know, you don't steal, you don't lie, bear things, things of that nature. But if you start making fun of them and sh start showing disrespect, people will stop doing those. And what happened? We lose uh, the land itself, or at least the Jews do, since we're talking about them. Uh, Jerusalem was supposed to be a beacon uh, to show um, the light of God. And uh, as long as they were doing that, all nations should, uh, would be attracted to them and would want to emulate them. Uh, but that's what I have so far. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some other things we'll come up with later. But these commands were, were an act of love that God um, is expressing. What did I put? I said, chapter, act based on chapter 4 through 12 is an expression of love, uh, living according to uh, God's command is an expression of love. But that's all I have for okay. that part. All right. Well, Moses is going on and again his, his soliloquy he continues on, and the next part is entitled the Decalogue in my particular Torah, and it's um um anyway we'll just just let it speak for itself. It's from Deuteronomy fourth chapter forty fourth verse through the fifth chapter the 30th verse and John okay did you read that now this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel these are the testimonies the statutes and the judgment which Moses spoke to the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt on this side of Jordan in the valley opposite Bel Peor in the land of Sihon king of the Amorites who dwelt in Heshbon whom Moses and the children of Israel defeated after they came out of Egypt. And they took possession of his land, and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, who were on this side of Jordan, toward the rising of the sun. And Arar, which is on the banks of the river Arnon, even the Mount Sion, this is 
uh, Herb Hermon, and all the plains of the east of Jordan, as far as the Sea of Abaha, below the slopes of Pisgah. And Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgment which I speak in your hearing today, that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Hebron. The Lord did not make the covenant with our fathers, but with us. Those who are here today, all of us who are alive, the Lord talked with you face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the words of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and you did not go to the mountain. I go up to the mountain. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought forth you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not take yourself, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth below or that is in the waters under the sea, under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to, tho to those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord, as the Lord your God command you. Six days you shall work and do all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, sh you nor your son, nor your daughters, nor your maids, male servants, nor your female servants, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your, nor a, your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servants and your female servants may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in, in the land of Egypt. And the Lord God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and that you may be and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor, nor uh, wife, and you shall not de desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servants, his female servants, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly. In the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more, and he wrote them on two tablets, of stone and gave them to me. So, so it was when you heard the voice uh, from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was burning with fire that you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes
and your elders, and you said, Surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God speaks with man, yet he, yet he still lives. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there, for who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire, as we have and lived? You go near and hear all that the Lord our God has said, and tell us all the Lord our God says to you, and we will hear ye hear and do it. Then the Lord heard the voice of I'm sorry, then the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spake to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people. Which, you, which they have spoken to you. They are right in all they have spoken. Oh, that they had such hearts in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandments, and that it might be well with them and with their children. Go and say to them, Return to your tents. Where am I? What's my stopping place? On the 31st. 30, 30, 30th. 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 Okay. All right. Oh, go and return. Go and say to them, return to your tents. That's the 27th verse. Mm -hmm. That's the 30th of chapter 5. Yeah. You sure? Mm hmm. All right. Good. Because the next one, 31, says, But as for you, stand here by me. And I will speak to you all the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which you shall teach them. Keep going, because that's not, that's 28 in my, my Torah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, teach you. And they shall observe them in the land which I am giving them to possess. Therefore, you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left one more verse uh, you shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you that you might live and that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess okay, okay. Well, in this chapter, well, there is the uh, the Ten Commandments. Um, there, uh, what can we uh, what can we say about the Ten Commandments? <laughs> there is the um, it's the the way we should live. God. God's way of how we should live and the commandments as I said before is, is an act of love and living within them is an act of love let's see I have other, what other notes do I have here um, Well, let me go on and mm -hmm. find some. Um, I um, one of the first verses I noted was um, chapter five two, and it said, "The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant with us, the living, every one of us who is here today." And I that again, the when we're talking about um, Jesus or Yeshua. And the sacrifice that he made, it's all relating to a covenant that was made. 
and the covenant is in force um, when there is when there when with the living. Once the once the covenant of testament, uh, once the person dies or the, then the covenant is no longer in in force, and that's why, in my opinion, um, when the uh, Moses some he said to them. The Lord made the covenant with not with your fathers, but but with us the living. Um, once again, uh, and then I think my my commentary may hold this out a little bit. He was they because they were saying that this is to say not with them alone who are now dead. Because again, the covenant is a we're talking about covenants that are are in force with the living. And they, this is the living now. This is this is. I hope I'm not muddling this up too much, but um, this covenant is with them who are living here, as it will be with future generations who are living. The covenant is still in force with the future generations who are living. Did you find your? No, I, no. I didn't have anything additional to say. But with the uh, covenant, every generation confirms the covenant. Yes, it's not. Um, uh, one generation confirms it for future generation. Yes. The covenant is, uh, every group every, must, must affirm the, the ex covenant. Exactly, with the living. Yeah, each, each, each living generation affirms the covenant. And what, again, this Moses is, is not bringing up anything new. He's reiterating um, the same thing he told them in Horeb. He said, observe the Sabbath day and the keep is holy. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor. I mean, he goes through that again. Observe the Sabbath and to remember it. And um, goes on and on with the, the other commandments. These are not new commandments. Again, um, in verse 29, he says, Be careful then to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. And follow only the path that the Lord your God has enjoined upon you so that you may thrive and that it may go well with you and that you may long endure in the land you are to occupy. He's again reiterating, if you don't do this, then as you were saying, John, they're the covenant, they, they are, they're, they're, the her, they're, the land is an inheritance for them, but it's conditional upon them following God's commandments. Because if they don't, God says he will throw them out. And Moses is already, in the previous chapter, he's he's already said that's, that's what's going to happen. They will be scattered as a result of them breaking um, God's commandment. Um, One other thing, um, it kind of hit me just now. Uh, in verse 29, it says, Oh, that they had a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep my commandment. Mm -hmm. That struck me a little funny uh, because they sp this was after they'd spoken to Moses and said, uh, "Well, they were afraid of God," mm -hmm. and uh, let you know Moses, you go up and find out what God wants us to do, and we will do it. Y you get the uh, point, uh, uh, the idea that well, they didn't want to go up because they were afraid, but God says that. Uh, Oh, that they had, well, maybe it was just a, a heart in them that would fear him. It, and I think the fear, I'm trying to look at the Hebrew word, but I think it, the word for fear is translated here as re revere. Um, the okay. Hebrew is stronger. It says it conveys also a sense of awe and fear. Okay, but well, they didn't have that. Mm -hmm. St. God says he wished they did. Yes, awe of awe and fear, yeah. Yeah, um, awe has uh, as the idea of something that takes your breath away. Yes. So they were afraid of God, but I suppose it's like uh, if you see a lion, you're afraid of the lion, but that lion's not going to take your breath away. Mm -mm. If you see a beautiful painting or something of that nature, uh, or a beautiful sunset, yeah. you know that might take your breath away uh, in that sense of awe, but. Um, they, from seeing the, the, the fire and the smoke, a, a sense of awe is not automatic. It, it comes from the heart, and, mm -hmm. and they, they didn't have it. 
and not saying that we have it and they didn't. It, uh, I, definitely, we don't have it because if, if the things that we see each day, that just creation in itself, the the human body is it, it is is such awe that someone could create the body as it's such an intricate piece of machinery and uh it does make you you're in awe of it and you, you should be in awe and fear of someone who's able to do that um, but we don't we we mm -hmm. we are take it for granted and uh and we don't we definitely don't fear god because if we feared him we wouldn't be doing what we're doing uh, we yeah. have no fear we have no fear because uh, and that's sad because we don't fear that mm -hmm. he says who he right. it says he is who he says he is and he's able to give us mm -hmm. life and take life from us well i don't think that was their well their main concern was that, well they didn't get that because their main concern was that question was why should we die why should we go up to god and die mm -hmm. uh, well I, they, I guess they thought that that was it if they went up to such an awesome god they would die but he assured him them um uh, well, then well they didn't listen to what moses was saying then, no they didn't because if they thought they were going to die then they wouldn't get into the land mm -hmm. how could that be i think they were more concerned well yeah more about dying than fearing god or being in love with god uh, they're more concerned with tomorrow and their daily living but they were comparing god to other gods too because um get i just this really came into mind with right now um in verse 21 it may be yours may be different it may be a different verse but it says and they gave they moses said what they said that he says the lord our god has just shown us his majesty and presence and we have heard his voice out of the fire we have seen this day that man may live though god has spoken to him let us not die then for this fearsome fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the God, Lord our God any longer, we shall die. For what mortal ever heard the voice of the living God speak out of the fire as we did and lived? And that that gives you an idea of what the um, what the pagan um, gods were doing. Because with the pagan, the pagans require blood and 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 that you die, that you so. Uh, that you get with um oh what's the one all of them required um blood I'm trying to think of the one that required mullet mul mul that required you to put your firstborn into the fire so they were equating the God of Israel with these pagan gods and so that's why they were afraid perhaps because um, these pagan gods were ruthless and required uh, well their obedience to the pagan gods was uh, I don't know very um, no regimented I don't want to say ruthless but they were definitely willing to, to do what they oh said yeah to do what the pagan gods said based yeah. on something someone uh, claimed but, yeah without okay. any de demonstration of power yeah Okay, well, we're going to take a, a break right now. And then after the break, there are two more sections. The Shema, and then um, also um, the Shema, and then the um, a small portion on idolatry. Okay, we'll take a small break.
Shema, Deuteronomy 6, chapter 1 through the 25th verse, and then I'll just go right into dealing with idolatry, Deuteronomy 7, chapter 1st through the 11th verses. No, I can do 6 and you can do the other one. You can do what now? I'll read six. It's just one after. Hmm? You read, I do it. Okay. And this is the instruction, the laws, and the rules that the Lord your God has commanded me to impart to you, to be observed in the land which you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you, your son, and your son's son may revere the Lord your God and follow as long as you live all his laws and commandments which I enjoin upon you, to the end that you may long endure. Obey, O Israel, willingly and faithfully, that it may go well that you may long endure. Um, I'm sorry. Obey, O Israel, willingly and faithfully, that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. As the Lord, your, as the, Lord the God of your fathers spoke to you, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord is one. And that's Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Ve'achavta et Adonai Elohecha, bekol levecha, u bekol nefshecha, u bekol meodecha. Take to to the take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you're away, and when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead, and inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you great and flourishing cities which you did not build, Houses full of good things which you did not fill, hewn cisterns which which you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant and eat your fill. Take heed that you do not forget the Lord who freed you from the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. Revere only the Lord your God and worship him alone, and swear only by his name. Do not follow other gods, any gods of the peoples about you, for the Lord your God in your midst is an impassioned God. Lest the anger of your Lord your God blaze forth against you, and he wipe you off the face of the earth. Do not try the Lord your God as you did at Massa. Be sure to keep the commandments, exhortations, and laws which the Lord your God has enjoined upon you. Do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may go well with you, and that you may be able to occupy the good land which the Lord your God promised on oath to your fathers, that your enemy may be enemy may be driven out before you as the Lord has spoken. When in time to come your son asks, what means the exhortation, laws, and rules which the Lord our God has enjoined upon you? You shall say to your son, we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt, and the Lord freed us from Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord wrought before our eyes marvelous and destructive signs and portents in Egypt against Pharaoh and all his household. And us he freed from there, that he might take us and give us the land that he has promised on oath to our fathers. Then the Lord commanded us to observe all these laws, to revere the Lord our God for our lasting good and for our survival, as is now the case. It will be therefore to our merit before the Lord our God to observe faithfully this whole instruction as he commanded us. And we go on to verse chapter 7, verse 1 through 11. When the Lord your God brings you to the land that you're about to invade and occupy, and he dislodges many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gergesites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Yebusites, seven nations much stronger than you, and the Lord your God delivers them to you and you defeat them, you must doom them to destruction, grant them no terms and give them no quarter. You shall not intermarry with them, do not give your daughters to their sons, 
or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your children away from me to worship other gods, and the Lord's anger will blaze forth against you, and he will promptly wipe you out. Instead, this is what you shall do to them. You shall tear down their altars, smash their pillars, cut down their sacred posts, and consign their images to the fire. For you are a people consecrated to the Lord your God. Of all the peoples on the earth, the Lord your God chose you to be his treasured people. It is not because you are the most numerous of peoples that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you. Indeed, you are the smallest of peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he made to your fathers that the Lord freed you with a mighty hand and rescued you from the house of bondage from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that only the Lord our God, your God is God, the steadfast God who keeps his gracious covenant to the thousandth generation of those who love him and keep his commandments, but who instantly requites with destruction those who reject him, never slow with those who reject him, but requiting them instantly. Therefore, observe faithfully the instruction, the laws, the rules with which I charge you today. And a very important part, um, I'm not sure if the Jewish people say this Shema every day or not. I th kind of think they do. I'm not saying they do it either three times a day. Three times a day, yes. Okay. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And, um, and Moses is telling them, Moses is giving them instructions. This is how it will go well with you if you will keep the commandments. Hear, O Israel, and he's in a in a very important thing. I think it's it's going to be important because everybody is talking about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. Well, I doubt seriously if people know what the mark of God. If you ask, well, what is the mark of God? The beast only mimics what God has done, and here God says to them in verse eight, He says, um, He tells them, He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is. Um, is our God the Lord alone you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and impress these on your children he says recite them at home and when when you let when you're away when you lie down and when you get up and bind them as a sign on your hand and let them well I, if you ask most people what is a phylactery um, um, or, or, or what are um, and the uh, or tefillim and these are what Jewish men do, uh, um, religious Jewish men do every morning. They have the laws of um, uh, the Shema written in this on the um, um, in the uh, parchment within these boxes that they wear on their foreheads and that they wear the tefillim on their arm, which has a box also, which has the um, the um, parts of the Torah and on your doorpost is the mezuzah which has a uh, part of the Torah and there's the words from Deuteronomy 6 chapter the Shema which is 6 chapter 4 to the 9th verse and the 11th chapter 13 to the 21st verse is written on the parchment of the mezuzah so I think if, if we get nothing else from this is the mark of God and the mark of God is that they bind it on their hand, and and they and it's it's simply his commandments, the commandments from the Torah, and it's bound on the head, and it's on their hand, and it's on their forehead, and if you know that, I don't think the mark of the beast will matter at all, and also, he, he um, Israel is referred to as a peculiar people, and it's in Hebrew it's called Am. Uh, segula and Am um, Segula is uh, I want to make sure I give it the right definition of, uh, of Segula that they are um, hold on a minute it's from yeah Am um, Segula and it, it means a, a property Segula Am um, is people and Segula means uh, uh, property or possession so the the people of Israel are the possession of of God, a, when they say peculiar people, Am Segula, are treasured people. Also, it's how it's uh, um, um, also it's interpreted.
John? Mm, okay. Um, one other thing that uh, was mentioned said that God's love is not for the squeamish or, or the weak. Uh, people read um, the commandments and what God requires and wants them to do and the deniers of God or deniers of Israel uh, find it hard but it's, it's not for the squeamish so if you're somewhat squeamish or you think God's law is God's love is kind of harsh then I guess his love is not for you um, but God's love is also God's love for his people is also shown through the, the respect for the land itself um, and everything or anything that uh, or whatever God allows to happen it happens out of love it's, it's not out of um, hatred or malice or injustice everything that God allows to happen happens out of love and it's said again God's love is not for the squeamish now the um, the Shema or the prayer of uh, that starts off the Lord the Lord thy God is one and some may ask what does that mean that the, the Lord thy God is one uh, some said uh, that uh, it means uh, well it doesn't mean that you know there's there it there's a particular number but that uh, God is all-encompassing that every that God is is part of everything that exists uh, nothing uh, can exist without him they uh, go on to say that uh, uh, we should love the Lord with all our heart which means our hearts should be focused on God I, I, not just our hearts but our very lives uh, should be uh, focused on God with our I put mind and soul but I think one uses strength uh, uh, but our soul is um, I think you mentioned it earlier Judith that about our soul our, our soul we call it our soul but that's not quite true our souls belong to God and he we have it based on deposit and he can take our souls anytime we uh, anytime he likes so to love God with all our, our soul we have to keep in mind well this this soul doesn't belong to us it belongs to God uh, we have nothing uh, to claim no soul to claim and when we uh, uh, um, when we love God with all our hearts, uh, our mind, sorry, means we lo we obey Him or love Him. We obey Him with all of our resources, in in the work in our work that we do, um, whatever resources we have. That's how we display our love for God. So here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. Uh, mind and soul meaning we reckon that there is only one God and God is part of all uh, of, of the universe of creation uh, 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 seen and unseen <coughs> and uh, uh, with our, our heart I mean he's our focus with our souls meaning we recognize our soul doesn't belong to us it belongs to him and with our strength the everyday works that we do um, is how we display his love for us well uh, one other thing I um, I feel to mention um, also uh, was in um, chapter 6 of Deuteronomy it's toward the end and, and we usually recite this during uh, Passover and um, it says when in time to come your son asks you what means the exhortation laws and rules and which the Lord our God has enjoined upon you you shall say to your son we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt and the Lord freed us from Egypt with a mighty hand and because this is a messianic um, chapter 
we we who may not be a part of Israel can uh, well those who who have made the decision for the Messiah Jesus can attest to the fact that we were slaves to sin and that because of the strong hand of God by allowing his son to die uh, for our sins um, that God has redeemed us with an outstretched arm and we were slaves to sin but because of the Messiah because of his death his, suffer, his, his suffering his death and his resurrection and because we accept that we have we, we say we we accept that we believe that he died for our sins that we have been free from um, our sins free from the penalty of sin let's put it that way and um, and so this word is for everyone that God and <clears throat> God when God redeemed Israel from Egypt it was the beginning of a messianic movement because as we mentioned last week and weeks before that through this nation this Am Sagula this this unique possession of God he brought forth the Messiah who died for the sins of the whole world and we accept that death and resurrection then we will be free from the penalty of our sins. Yeah. I, one other co commentary to mention, probably didn't need to be a commentary, but I didn't get a chance to look it up. When uh, Moses did enter the promised land, uh, was a few centuries later with, on the mountain with Jesus and Elijah. Mm -hmm. And what they talked about was the exodus or was an exodus uh, out of out of Egypt out of slavery so uh, that's what Christ talked about in exodus which uh, was our our exodus out of slavery and out of bondage while uh, the children of Israel exodus was out of um, was out of Egypt so the exodus comes twice uh, through Moses and through Christ, which is part of the messianic uh, theme that you were, were mentioning about. Mm -hmm. uh, both happened in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, I, what other note did I make? No, um, I did, well, one other thing, we talked about the land and the good land. Uh, so that's pretty much it. There's the laws that were given, the law or commandments that were given, and the commandments were given out of love or part of love for them to live in the land. And if they obeyed the uh, uh, commands, they stayed in the land. If they disobeyed, they they um, were no better than the people who were there, and they will be driven out. Mm -hmm. And another group of God's chosen people, or another generation of God chosen people, will come in and possess the land. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that uh, we haven't gotten to the blessings and curses yet, mm -hmm. but uh, if they stay in the land and obedient, if they are obedient in the land, they will stay in the land, and God will will fight for them and defend them. But it, but he, but Moses, there is a way out. That's what Moses, yes, there is a penalty for sin. Yeah. There is a consequence for sin. Yeah. But Moses said, there is a way out. He said, when you are uh, in this other land yeah, that you've right. been set to, if you will. Um, remember. Yes, remember the times of old. And yeah. that, yes, that you will sin, but there is a way out. So, mm -hmm. And we thank God for that way out that God created before the for the universe was created because he knew that this would happen and he had a pattern he was not caught off guard god is not caught off guard by uh by our sinful nature and sinful act but he made a plan of redemption for us he made a plan of he loved us so much he made a, a way for us to return mm -hmm. and we just thank him for jesus tonight thank you for yeshua jesus that plan of redemption that he that he has 
um, completed that work for us, for um, and He's taken on that penalty of sin from us. He took that on. He took it on Himself, mm -hmm. and we thank God for Him. Amen. Our older brother, who redeemed us. Amen. Um, we continue on in Deuteronomy. As I said, this is a crescendo towards. We're going toward the high holy days, toward Rosh Hashanah, towards Yom Kippur, and towards Sukkot. And as, as you see, each week it becomes um, uh, louder and louder. Crescendo means the music is getting louder, louder and louder and louder. And Moses is giving it his all because he's going to die soon. So this is his last will and testament, so to speak. Or, or deathbed confession, I, you know, because it said that the deathbed confession is more powerful than anything, and so Moses is no, knows he's going to die, and he's, I, I, there is, I guess it's like an attachment to a father to the child because he has shepherded these people since they left Egypt, and I can imagine that, my goodness, see, wow, just to talk with him when we see him on the other side, I say, well, Moses, how did you do it, and. Um, and here he is, he's, he's um, telling them what will come and what they need to do when they sin. And so next week we go on and the um, Parsha for next week is called Ekev. And it's from Deuteronomy 7th chapter 12th verse through the 11th chapter 25th verse. And Ekev means on the heel of. And um, just to give you a little Hebrew background on it the the um the um the um shoresh or the root of this um hebrew word, word ekev is ayin uh kuf kaf kaf bet i mean kuf kuf excuse, excuse me kuf bet and it it's the same root for um jacob or his name in hebrew is yaakov uh, Yaakov. So on the heels of, if you remember, and um, during Jacob's birth, um, he was on the heel of his brother Esau um, in the womb. And so anyway, just to give you a little Hebrew background. And so it reads, Vahaya ekhev tishma'on et ha mishpatim ha -ele. Vi shamartem ve asitem otam ve shamar adonai elohecha lecha et ha brit ve et ha chesed asher nishba la avotecha. And it says, If you do obey these rules and observe them faithfully, the Lord your God will maintain you for the gracious covenant that he made on oath with your fathers he will love you and bless you and multiply you he will bless the issue of your womb and the produce of your soil your new grain and wine and oil the calving of your herd and the lambing of your flock and the land that he swore to your fathers to give to you and that should be very interesting and again Moses is teaching them this is what you need to do if you will do this God will provide God will provide for you it's the only thing you have to do is obey his commandments and he will provide and um, do you have anything else no. I think it's appropriate to end the partial on that but God will provide for us if we will heed his commandments Amen. and um, we will sing a song I, I forget the sing the song but I think it's appropriate to sing this song and uh, as a blessing over what we've done we've we've eaten of the bread and remembrance of the body of our Messiah Yeshua Jesus and we drank of the wine as a remembrance of his blood and um, the covenant um, that he established um, uh, for us to be reconciled back to the Father. And um, I think this song is appropriate. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank you. We say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shavua Tov. Have a good week. And we look forward to um, seeing everybody uh, next Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay.